Hello. I can't see your username. Hi. Oh, my username is Toilet Eye, but you can just call me Molly if you'd like. It's wonderful to meet you. Hey, it's nice to meet you too. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit new to the server, but it's been like a really great experience so far. Everyone is so nice. Yeah, it's been a good group. I've been really happy with who's showed up so far. So, um, I'm looking through your portfolio and it reminds me of the kinds of work that I see coming out of the um, viz dev department over at Ringling. Really? Uh-huh. Uh, what's your background? Um, I'm viz dev, but I went to SCAD. Oh, okay. The arch nemesis of Ringling. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how recently did you graduate from SCAD? I graduated maybe two years ago. Okay. How have those last two so, years been? They've been pretty okay. I, I got my first art job. It's um, it's like theme park design. So like I'm doing concept art for like theme parks and attractions, awesome. which is nice. It's just not animation. And yeah. animation is where my heart lies, you know? But I did just finish up um, art directing my first feature film. It was like only four minutes, but it was still really fun. Wow. Uh, was that, where was that, that you got to direct a, a uh, short film? Um, it was for a, a full length film, but like it was only a four minute segment and I'm not allowed to say quite yet, oh, Okay. but it has been announced. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's really cool. So what do you want to know? Um, I want to know, like I'm in the spot where I'm trying to, cause like back in school I was like, I thought I was the best, you know, like the best of the best. And I had that like, that, like toxic mindset. Um, and now <laughs> well, I'm you're going to SCAD to where they, myself. SCAD is such a huge school and there's so many people in the department there I, I i'm assuming there's like a decent amount of people who are tryhards but are they're not very good yeah they'll, they'll accept anyone with money that's the toxic part about it uh -huh. so that's why that's why i had that mindset it's not my fault but anyways um i'm in the spot where i just want to keep learning and growing i want to humble myself and i want to just know how i can continue on this path of getting better and better um, yeah, I mean, VizDev is one of those things that like, I have a hard time qualifying the work because I've seen a lot of it, but I, I like, I've never taught VizDev. I have never worked in a industry where they call it VizDev. Um, and like, you know, I, I know people that work in the animation industry, but I don't know that much about how it's different from something like the game industry. Right. So it's always, uh, not just like, sorry. I, I just like, I not always feel like... a little bit shy about making too many bold statements when it comes to work that's aimed at an industry that I don't know very well. Yeah, I guess I'm talking more about like art in general because I, I love art, I love drawing. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing like daily studies, I've been doing daily paintings, I've been doing like anatomy sketches. Um, but I wonder if I'm just like going around in circles, you know, like I feel like if I keep doing this, I'll have to, you know, hit a point at some point where I, I just explode. Yeah. <laughs> Explode? <laughs> what do you I, mean? I feel like a lot of artists, um, they'll be at this point where they do their dailies, they do their sketches, they do their paintings, and then at one point they just are immensely better. Uh huh. Or maybe it's more gradual. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, hmm. I think there's moments where like there is like a a moment of insight where you just go like. Oh wait, edges. I get it. I haven't been I haven't cared about edges and then now I see why people care about them and I understand what tools I can use to like uh, really control them and then you can really quickly like once you identify where the problem is and what resources can solve it, uh, then you can really really quickly make huge progress on like one specific aspect of art. And so I think you can see somebody will have breakthrough like that. The other way that I see people have breakthroughs is like um, when I've done mentoring, I try to get artists who are working with me to make way, way too much art. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about people who are doing personal projects, commercial work, dailies, all that kind of stuff. And then they have this big breakthrough. And what I've seen out of people having breakthroughs is it's not a matter of them learning new things in some cases, but actually letting go of baggage where like they insist on wanting to do something in their work that they didn't actually know that well and they didn't care about but they felt obligated to add it in anyway and then when they let go of that it released more space for them to 
to focus on the things they actually did care about. And by like, it wasn't really so much a matter of um, them learning something new as it was like them taking all of these sort of disparate energies and focusing them down into like a more uh, focused and like coordinated effort. And it, it'll, it it's like what I see out of a lot of VizDev portfolios is a lot of stuff that feels very, very speculative. It's not like um, when I see a lot of illustration portfolios, the contest is always like, how can who can make like the illustration that best represents their own personal taste? While with VizDev mm -hmm. stuff, because it's so commercially focused, there's a lot of like, I need to prove I can do this style for these kind of studios and this kind of style for these yeah. kind of studios. And so we have like yeah, rendered true. rocks in one section and then we have um you know the very flat simplified uh characters here and then we have a more rendered kind of like character design thing happening here and it feels mm -hmm. like you're trying to do a bunch of different styles and a bunch and then you've got character and environment and sketchbook and life drawing and like you're trying to do everything and like you probably have seen some peers who are out there who it seems like they can do everything because they've got great character designs and they have the they're creating these key shots of these scenes with the characters in them and all their environment work is brilliant and their characters are so expressive and you're like I need to be able to do everything but yeah. the revelations often come from like you have a, a strong grounding in a lot of stuff and you cut 50% of it to focus on the things that really matter to you and in doing so you just get to double the amount of energy and focus you have into those things that you have the greatest amount of insight in anyway and you can see how that can become incredibly powerful to be able to take more of your time more of your attention and focus it on the places where you already have the greatest strengths you have the potential to like magnify that a lot and then you know you you're doing a really good job of building a context for all your work where every single thing I click through here, it's not just like a JPEG that says like, I drew a pointy rock crystal thing. It's like, you know, you're showing all the different possible options and alternate color palettes. And like, you know, it is much, there's a sense that everything exists in a greater context of the work, which is good. But like, what if instead of a portfolio that was showing 12 different kind of styles and skills, was like everything was woven together into one big tapestry where you just had the your personal identity as an artist was really clear and everything in your characters your environments you know in your line art in your colors that all tied together into one unified vision of who molly cooper is um if right. you could do that i think you would uh your work would present stronger without you learning any new skills that sounds amazing because I know a lot of really successful artists, they will be just so passionate about just one thing and that will carry them throughout their career, you know? But like, it's not just like one thing. It's just like, you know, it feels like you're trying on a lot of different personalities inside this portfolio mm -hmm. and you're yeah. trying out a lot of different skill sets and you're showing like the work that's being done for very like hyper specific jobs. Like, hey, here's assets that could be used in a mobile game. Like, okay. um, you know what, if you're good at drawing environments, then uh, somebody who needs art and assets for a mobile game will, will hire you without you showing speculative assets for a mobile game. Like, I don't really like to see spec assets in student portfolios, but student portfolios feel often like they're primarily driven by spec assets, which I think is really counterproductive. Um, what do you mean by spec assets? Well, it's like, you know, you, this isn't an illustration you're doing because just for the sake of making the illustration, this looks like it's being done to show what an employer, what you would be able to do in this ca case if you'd gotten this assignment from an employer. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. And it's like, I see a lot of, in student, the hallmark of student portfolios is always like, you know, uh, character orthographics, you know, design sheets, stuff like this. Um, mm -hmm. which can be good in some cases to show your thinking, but it, it, if it's all, if your portfolio is all spec work and it's all being spread out across different styles and different types of projects, 
it becomes a lot harder for somebody who's going to be looking at your portfolio to hire you to understand what they're likely to get when they do hire you. Um, Very true, yeah. So uh, when I've dealt with this problem in the past, sometimes you can get a lot of extra oomph for your work just by cutting out all the stuff that is like taking away from your primary focus and just removing it mm -hmm. from the portfolio. And like, you can have it in a secondary space. If some employer ever asks, hey, we're doing these kinds of, um, this is an example asset for something we have in our game. Do you have anything like that? You can, ha you'll have it on your hard drive, right? You're not, you're not yeah. gonna erase it from existence. You just, I think you need to create a, a more focused pre uh, presentation for your portfolio. And I think that going forwards with any kind of personal projects that you make, I think that you should really just focus on the parts about that that you love the most and like okay. use that time as like an escape away from the kind of like feeling of pressure to advance your career. Like use the time you're making art as an escape from the obligations of feeling like you need to, you know, fit into a particular industry and cr and like have everything in your portfolio emanate from that mindset. And you will, I think you'll probably like the results better. Like you'll know you're on the right track when you start feeling more excited to sit down and make art. Like mm. um, it should feel less boring. <laughs> it should feel more <laughs> exciting. Um, you, it should like rejuvenate you rather than burden you out if you're doing it exactly right. Um, and so I would push towards that and then edit the remaining work in your portfolio down to conform to that vision. And I think that you're going to start getting a stronger reaction from your portfolio. Uh, you know, it sounds yeah. like you're already getting some traction. I just think like it's, it still feels too much like a student portfolio, not enough like a professional portfolio to me. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that's definitely a different mindset than what I have been doing for the past, I don't know how many years, but I'm excited to try it out. It, it's the, it's like, um, I see it all the time in Ringling students, this idea of like, I will do anything to be a professional. I'm willing to work any number of hours. I'm willing to get better than anyone. I am willing to do whatever, like, uh, learn whatever skills like are on the table. Like I'm, I will do it. I can do it. And just that like dominating mindset of like, I will. I will be the best regardless of whatever it takes, you know, the sort of Rocky montage yeah. mindset. And, um, you know, it, it's like, there's a period of time where that's really, really productive because you need to learn a ton of skills in order to like uh, work as a professional, regardless of mm -hmm. whatever else you do. Like you need to actually be good at like drawing and painting and whatever. But you, there is a, there is a degree which it's basically impossible for someone over the course of like, a four-year degree plus the couple of years after college to get good at everything. <laughs> it's just not, it's not an option. So like, yeah, not realistic. Um, yeah, so that comes back to the idea of like, in a lot of cases when somebody is deeply overworked, I try to overwork them when I'm mentoring them specifically so they start taking shortcuts. Because it's when you start taking shortcuts and you cut out all the unnecessary steps and you cut out the work you don't really want to do because you don't have enough time to be able to like do the work that you really want to get done, you start making hard choices about what stays and what goes. And that oftentimes gives a lot of perspective to people about what they really want to make in their art, what their style is, and you know creates an example that they can then replicate over and over and over again to build their portfolio out. But you've been giving yourself so much latitude to keep experimenting and keep showing all these different skills and keep learning and growing, but you haven't yet made the really tough choice of like cutting, editing, focusing it down and putting pressure on yourself to start creating a focused stream of attention rather than like committing to building this entire, you know, galaxy of, of different skill sets. Right. Um, and yeah, you're at that point where that needs to happen because you're not gonna be getting to be like one of the best painters in the world and also one of the best character designers and also one of the best, you know, environment artists. Like you're just, yeah. it, 
you you can't learn all those skills at the high enough level all simultaneously you probably have most of the skills that you need in order to be able to like start accomplishing a lot of your professional goals just so long as you can figure out what you keep and what you throw out absolutely that's my and, that's yeah. my professional opinion all right thank you so much thank you so much